Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 6, Video 2 on Probabilistic Damage Stability Input Parameters. Before we get started running the probabilistic analysis, we need to enter in some global data. Our first decision is which design code we're going to use, resolution 216 or 19. And we also, from those codes, need to define a series of drafts, our deepest partial and light service drafts. We can do that in two ways. We can either define regular load cases with uh, loads and tanks and so on and use those, or we can define load groups which uh, don't contain any tanks and fluids but uh, allow us to directly specify the displacement and VCG to produce the required GM for those three draft conditions. You should use each, whichever of those gives you the worst case. It's often the load group with the empty tanks that will give you the worst case. You should also choose the type of vessel that we're going to use, a cargo or a passenger vessel, and there are parameters to enter for the number of adjacent zones to consider. You should probably try out seeing if you can get away with just considering one or maybe two adjacent zones. If you can reach your attained index that way, that will make the analysis faster. But if you need to, you can increase the number of adjacent zones of damage to consider up to three, four or higher if required. As you uh, define your zones of damage and the combinations, you'll find that some of the damage conditions have very low probabilities of occurring. That may be because they're very small or because of where they're located on the vessel. And so you can enter in a value uh, that's a minimum probability that should be considered. If the probability of damage is lower than that, then those analyses will be skipped and your analysis will be faster. You probably also want to ignore damage cases which result in very high angles of trim. So you may want to enter a limit of perhaps 15 or 20 degrees as the maximum trim angle to consider. And finally, in this table you'll see a number of grey numbers. Those grey numbers are values that are calculated by Hydromax. It's a good idea to review them and make sure that they make sense. So let's switch over to Hydromax and uh, we go to the input window to the global tab and I'll just maximize that and we can see these values. So for each of these values, uh, there's a cell on this table. If we point to that cell, you can see a little pop-up which tells us the allowable values. To type in a new setting in any of these cells, you only have to type in a part of the name that's unique. To, so to switch this from one code to the other, I just have to type 58 there and that will switch over to the other MSC code. If I type 82, it will switch back. Uh, the next section lets us define our load cases. So I've actually defined three load groups named deepest, partial and light. And I select those in there to uh, define my drafts. I need to specify a cargo or a passenger vessel just by typing C or P. And then the subdivision lengths are calculated by Hydromax. The maximum molded breadth will also be calculated for you, but you can override that if you wish. I've got two adjacent zones that I'm going to consider. I'm not going to consider any probabilities below 0.001 and I'm not going to consider any damage cases with, which result in a trim greater than 15 degrees. The code also prescribes some rules around uh, the extent of damage that should be calculated and so we leave the setting here limited. We can change that to an unlimited setting if we need to. It's also important that you define which side of the vessel you're going to damage. Remember from our damage stability webinar last month that sometimes the vessel can heal towards damage and sometimes it can heal away from damage. So you should be aware of which side of the vessel you're damaging. And finally, uh, there's a sign convention relating to the zones of subdivision. And uh, we start out with the zone one of the stern, but we can change that to the bow if desired. Finally, as well as computing the obtained index and having it larger than the required index, there are some situations in which we can apply a reduction factor, uh, 0.8 for some vessels. As well as that, for cargo vessels, there is a requirement that not only should the attained index exceed the required index, but it should exceed 0.5 of the required index for all individual load cases. For passenger vessels, there's an even str more stringent requirement that it exceed 0.9 of the required index for each individual load case. Thank you for watching.